Hello everybody, my name is Naya and I'm the Black Female Engineer and I provide content for new and aspiring software engineers and today we are going to be talking about the fastest way to become a front-end software engineer, a front-end developer in 2021. Now this is a follow-up to the video fastest way to become a software engineer in 2021. I'll link it above but make sure you watch that first if you haven't because Today I'm going to be a lot more detailed and so if you don't understand the overarching roadmap to software engineering in general, then following along with this video will be kind of difficult. And so try to watch that first and let's get to it. So step number one, along with learning how to create paragraphs and titles in your HTML, also learn how to incorporate forms, tables, and embed images and videos in your HTML. Now, this is something I didn't know was very important until I was learning to develop and coding. Forms specifically, forms are responsible for, I'd say, at least at least 50 to 60 percent of the interaction you'll get from apps and websites and so think about facebook facebook you have you know the status section and you can edit your status or post a new status and upload something that in its bare core is a form same thing with the blog post. If you're on medium.com and you put in a title and you start writing out a new blog post and then press submit. Again, that in its most basic form is a form. <laughs> that is, this, yes, in the most basic you know, explanation possible, those are HTML forms. And so with forms, they allow users to interact and to upload things and to post things and edit. And this is very, something that's very important to do specifically when building apps because you want users to be able to create things, edit things, post things, and delete things. And a lot of times that comes from forms. Now, when we go into images and videos, I know some of you will say, oh, but I can just put images, you know, in my CSS or things like that. You can, but if we're talking about search engine optimization, it's best to put those things in your HTML. If you're just, you know, using images just for the aesthetics of things and you're just making a background and leaving it there, then it is fine to put on, on, on CSS. But if you are using images as a add-on to, you know, your articles or your sites or, you know, just supporting documentation, it's best to put it in your HTML because that makes it more SEO friendly. And if we're talking about a company that you're working for, you want things to be very search engine optimized because we want clients to be able to gravitate towards that company's sites and apps and you know find it easily and things like that because in this video we're talking about more skills that companies will want to see from you not just um things that you will do just for the fun of it we're talking about skills to know and skills to learn to get hired by a company as a front-end engineer and those three things, forms, tables, and embedding images and videos in your HTML are part of that. So step number two, now moving on to CSS. It's very important that you know how to manipulate colors and images in your CSS. So you know now how to you know, add images and add background colors and change background colors from red to blue in your CSS. That's very important and is a very you know, crucial step one. However, when was the last time you went on a site and their colors were just blue and red and you know, like, Things now have a certain um, design aesthetic to it. Things flow a certain way. They have gradients. They have a certain um, like borders that you know circulate a certain way. Being able to know how to manipulate that in CSS is very important because some people think that the images you get are it's that's what you have to use. The way you get it is how you have to use it. But that's not true at all. That would be terrible if that was true. 
what you get is just a starting point now learn how to yeah manipulate the shading of the image manipulate the sharpness and all of that through css and that will really set you on a great path in terms of design going more into design learn a css framework specifically bootstrap something that i don't think is talked about much is the importance of responsive design this is something that i heard nobody talk about until i was learning it in real time responsive design here is what it is you are on you know facebook.com on your computer then you decide to take a walk and you pull up facebook.com on your phone odds are just because you went on your phone didn't you know the design didn't go haywire you know the coloring didn't go crazy and the text still looked good it you know you were still readable and all of this but on your web browser your text is obviously bigger because it has you know more space to fill and the banner's bigger because again more space to fill and all of that that's responsive web design being able to design in such a way that no matter the screen size that the user is using the styling still stays consistent readable and you know very flattering and, and appealing this is something that is so hard and so time consuming and not hard in terms of like difficult to learn or understand more because of how fidgety css is if you are having trouble with CSS, it's not because you are a bad developer or you don't know enough. No, it just means you need more practice because the thing is CSS, no matter if you've been working for one month to 10 years, CSS is just something that is just a necessary ev evil. You will likely still always have problems with it unless they, you know, switch it up to make it easier and better and all of that it's difficult and it's fragile that's the word css is very fragile you think you you know created something one way perfectly and then you decide to change the font size and then everything goes haywire that is just it's a necessary evil and so where bootstrap comes in is it's a css framework that really allows the process to be of design specifically responsive design be a lot um simpler and just less time consuming because now instead of with css if you wanted to code something responsively in css you would need to declare the window size you're coding for in each you know block of code and recode out from the ground up and so if you're coding for a computer then a tablet and mobile devices that's like coding out three different projects from the ground up where bootstrap it really takes all of that away and allows you to just style things regularly and through you know their process and everything things end up being able to be altered for tablet viewing for mobile viewing for window viewing so learn a css framework specifically bootstrap because again that's what companies are using that's what companies are doing and that's what likely would be expected of you as a front-end engineer so the next thing you need to do staying on the frameworks you know side of things is learn a javascript framework specifically the more popular ones like react angular or Vue. these are the three most popular frameworks for front-end development and so you know if we're trying to get hired as soon as we can then best to stay with one of these now if you were to ask me if you were to ask me which framework to choose of the three i would tell you react that is what i would advise because a little backstory on react react was developed by software engineers from facebook it's maintained by facebook it's used through all of facebook's apps 
And so therefore, it's very well documented and you know it's very robust. Because of this commercial backing, the resources you have to learn it are very, very vast and very, very wide. And the community is very wide. And on top of that, React is a fantastic gateway to mobile development. Because for mobile development, you would use something like React Native. And so if you already know React for you know the web side of things, then you will have a much smoother transition going into mobile development. However, React's learning curve is like an S. So it's slow, 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 slow. Then you kind of dip a little bit because it's like, oh my gosh, like I don't know what I don't know. And then you shoot up because you it just clicks and then you go back to being the standard small learning increments and things like that. React, it took me tens of hours. I want to say it took me about a hundred hours to be honest for me to finally get to a place where I felt comfortable enough to use React and I didn't feel like an utter failure using React because it's not like something like HTML. HTML you have your rules and once you do them things work the way they're supposed to. You need a paragraph put the p tag and boom there's your paragraph there's nothing there's no ifs ands or buts about it however react it's less about the rules and more about the practice um in terms of understanding things because yes of course you know it has like their rules and their process but it's not for me it didn't it wasn't intuitive. It didn't follow my flow of thinking until I practiced it again and again. React is something that you can't just keep reading for you to understand um, or to finally understand and get the technology. You have to keep practicing. And so keep building things, keep practicing over and over again until one day you wake up and you're like, oh, oh okay i understand the first five steps i should always do and the next three steps i should always do and it's by starting to have that procedure in your development that things start to come together and so keep that in mind don't give up on react just because you know you see how you know difficult it is or anything that is the way it goes for most people it just that means you're do, that means you're doing it right if you want to you know just give up and just leave and everything it means you're on the right track so keep that in mind when learning this but like i said you can learn any different javascript framework i recommend react angular or Vue. and so you know do your own research and see which um you prefer um because you know it's this is your road you know i'm not I, i'm just here for advice this is your road please subscribe if you enjoyed this video or have seen my content and would like to be part of this community but there we have it everybody the tips i have for you to become a front-end software engineer the in the fastest time just the easiest way possible in 2021 so please leave a like and a comment and i will see you all soon bye y'all